Hello, and welcome back to Izzo Math. Today, we're going to talk about the Law of Signs. What is O? We saw from before that when given a triangle here that we could find out the area of this triangle if I'm given the values of a side angle side or two sides and the angle in between those two sides that I could find out if I essentially dropping down a perpendicular there that I was able to find out the area. In this case, if I was given the value of C and B and the angle in between the two of them, that that area would be one half B times C times the sine of that angle in between them. In this case, it would be sine of A. So that was what we learned from the previous unit. Now we can iterate and we can spin this triangle around and, and say if I was given in this case, well say in this case I was given the side A, the value of sine A, the value of sine B, and the angle in between that, those two values. Well the same thing from before I could find out that area of this same identical triangle would be one half A times B times the sine of C, big C in this case, that value right there. And if I spun it around again, we also need to agree that this is the same triangle. So if I have these two values, they have to be equivalent because the angle of the same triangle is the same. It just depends on what sides and what angles I'm getting with. And building on that, I can also, I can come up with this. And likewise, if I was given the value of this C value and this A value again, but this angle in between them, I can also find out the angle. And that would simply be one half AC times the sine of big B. So in all these, since I'm dealing with the same triangle, all of these values have to be equivalent. That leads to an interesting uh, definition, of, which we're going to call the law of sines, and this is what it means. Since I'm dealing with the same triangle, if I take these three values and I mul multiply them all by the value of 2, then it comes out to being, obviously, BC sine of A is equivalent to AB sine of C uh, is equivalent to AC sine of B. And same thing now if I divide everything else, all three equations by the value of ABC, it leads to what I call, what we call the law of sines, which comes out to being the sine of A over A is equal to the sine of B over little side B is equivalent to the sine of C over the side of C. So this ends up being what we call our law of sines. And then we use these identities or this, this formula to help us solve for various uh, triangles. And here's an example of how we do that. Here's an example that Professor Axler provides for us. He says, find all lengths of the sides, all three sides of a triangle given these dimensions. So I have an angle of 63 degrees, 76 degrees, and, um, and I got a side length of four. So as long as I'm dealing with an angle, angle side here, and I want to find out these values of C and the values of B. So obviously, if this is little b, we know this has to be angle big B because they're corresponding to the one just like big C is opposite of the side C. And that leaves this with big angle A, and this is going to be side A. So using the laws of, of sines, I can come up with essentially saying the sine of this angle, the, side, the sine of this angle, which is sine of 76 degrees, is going to be over this value, this a side, which is the value of 4. And that is going to be equivalent to the sine of 63 degrees, which is the angle right here. The sine of 63 degrees oops, is going to be equivalent to the sine of 63 degrees over this mystery length, which in this case happens to be b. So obviously solving for, for b here, I'm left with, obviously I can cross multiply and I get b, Sine, sine of 76 degrees, if I go out the long way, is equivalent to 4 sine of 63 degrees. And then finally divided by sine of 76, I'm left with B equals 4 sine of 63 degrees over my sine of 76 degrees. And using my calculator, I can get an approximation for B, which leaves me with an approximate value of 3.67. So this value of B is roughly... 3.67. So that side length is roughly 3.67. Now I'm going to use a similar equation or similar situation to find out the value C and the side length C. And that this is how I do that. Now to find the C value, I first need to find out what the value of this angle C is here. Obviously, I got 63 degrees and 76 degrees. If I add those two values up and subtract them from 180, which is the total degrees of a triangle, I'm left with this 
remaining angle to be 41 degrees. So that's the exact value. So knowing that, I want to set up a scenario where I can find out that value. So again, I'm going to use the sine of A only because that's a given an exact value. So I'm going to use sine of 76 degrees over the value of 4 is going to be equivalent in this, t in this case to sine of C. So sine of C in this case is going to be sine of 41 degrees over the value, my mystery guess, which is in case, you know, obviously is C here. And going through again, cross multiplying all that good stuff, I'm left with C has a value of 4 times the sine of 41 degrees divided by sine of 76 degrees. So that comes out to being roughly 2.70. So this side length over here has a value of roughly 2.70. So that is how I can solve uh, the side lengths of a triangle, given angle angle side in this case, using the lines of the laws of cosines. Again, I find out which values I have and I want to use the exact values. Let's go up and go ahead and solve it. Here's another example. In this example, we're asked to find all angles in a triangle that has one side length of eight one side length of uh, 5, and the angle op, uh, angle 30 degrees opposite the side length of 5. So we're going to go ahead and label this triangle. We'll call this, using this triangle, we'll call this side length the 8, and we'll call this side length the, the 5. And that makes this C value over here, this big degree of 30 degrees. And again, not drawn to scale, but don't worry about that. It's just an arbitrary triangle. So the whole idea here is I got a side-side angle. So I want to come up and using the law of signs, again, I'm going to say that the, the sine of big B over little b is equivalent to the sine of uh, big C over little c, since those are the values I'm given. So that leaves me obviously with the sine of B over 8 is equivalent to the sine of 30 degrees uh, over the value of 5. And going through this, obviously, this leaves me, we should be comfortable knowing that the sine of 30 is 1 half, the value of 1 half. So, after multiplication of the sine of B, multiply both sides by 8, it gives me 8 times the 1 half over 5, which gives me the sine of B is equivalent to 4 over 5. So that is my value, sine of B equals 4, five, four fifths. And finding the inverse, or the arc sine, of 4 fifths in degrees, that gives me a value of approximately 53 degrees. However, there is another possibility. Again, this talks back from the previous unit with the ambiguous angles that I also have the possibility of having this value of sine being 180 minus my 53 degrees, which leaves me with a value, a value of 127 degrees, which is still less than 180. So this guy is also a possibility. So again, that ambiguous angle gives me two possible triangles. And to what, get, illustrate what that looks like, it looks something like this. So these are the two possibilities given that scenario. I can have a triangle here on the left that looks like this with an angle of, of 53 degrees, or I can have the triangle here with an angle of 127 degree, 127 degrees. Depending on which scenario I choose, they are both ambiguous or both possibilities to this because I'm dealing with an ambiguous angle. And that will determine the remaining uh, approximation of this angle. Obviously, in this scenario, this is going to be 97 degrees, but in the other scenario. It'll be 23 degrees. Both of these are solutions. They both add up to 180 degrees. And um, given more information, we'll determine which triangle is the one I'm actually dealing with. In this example, Professor Axer asks us to find out all angles in a triangle that has one side length of 5, one side length of 7, and an angle of 100 degrees opposite the side of 7. So I'm dealing with a triangle. Again, my arbitrary triangle here. I'm going to call that the 7. I'll call this one the 5. And then opposite the 7, so I'm going to call this guy over here is 100 degrees. Again, the triangle is not drawn to scale, but it's helped, to help me set up what I'm going to be using. So in this scenario, I'm going to be using, the, again, the sine of B over B is equivalent to the sine of C over C, big C over little c. So I have, in this scenario, the sine of B, value, B over the B value, which is 5, is equivalent to the the sine of 100 degrees over the value of 7. And going through simplification, I end up with this. My sine of B is equivalent to 5 times the sine of 100 degrees all over 7, which is roughly 0 0.703. Now, finding the inverse, the inverse sine of 0.703 
or arc sine of 0 0.703 is going to be give me an angle value of approximately 44.7 degrees. Again, since it's done with a sine, there's that other possibility, and that other possibility is 180 minus this angle of 44.7 degrees. Because remember, I'm top, could possibly be dealing with the first and second quadrants, and that obviously comes out to being 135.3 degrees. However, look at this size right here, 135.5 degrees. I know that I'm given a uh, an angle already of establishing 100 degrees. Well, that makes that this this possibility is impo this is an impossible possibility because once I include that angle into it, it's I'm over 180 degrees. So in this case, there is no arbitrary angle. The only possible solution is my 44.7 degrees. I hope this helps and look forward to seeing you guys on the Law of Cosines, which are going to be coming up next. Until then, feel free to check back on IsoMath with all your math needs. See you soon.